Hi everyone! Just popping in quickly to do a live video for you. And I know I've been a little bit absent again. I apologise for that. It's been crazy. So just getting my gloves on and in a moment I'll just move the camera. I'm just making sure that um, the iPad is open and I, I will be able to see who's in and see your comments. There we go. Okay. Morning, Braddy Patty. Now let's see if I place the camera here. Does that cover it? Okay. Oh yeah, we should be good. Awesome. All right. Hi, Barry. How are you going? So we're going to do a bottle bottom pour. So this is the bottom of a, potentially it was a Coke or a Pepsi bottle. So, and I've cut out um, little triangles. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Bum, bum, bum. Little triangles here and hi Lisa hi Carol um, that way when I'm pouring the paint over the top and it flows down the ridges when it does come around here it will go inside as well instead of when you lift it up at the end you've got this big circle and hope that the paint goes in this is already allowing some of the paint to go in. So, okay. Here we go. Move that out of the way. Hi, Sunny. All right, so we have, this is a 16 by 20 inch canvas. So it's quite larger than I'm used to doing on my videos. So I'm a little bit nervous about that. Uh, yeah, but first off, we'll let's get our paints into this cup. So start off with a bit of white. This is the Spring Brand Lotion Acrylic House Paint mixed at equal parts with Floetrol. All right. Just pop some of that in the bottom. And then I've just pulled out my colours and I've given them a shake already. This is, oh, I should stop doing that. Ultramarine Deep. Ultramarine, yeah, Ultramarine Deep. And Splat. Oh, I'm not going to worry about the Splats because it's all going to cover the canvas anyway. So... How is everybody? Oh, Carol, I just read the whole thing. Thank you. All right, so this is crimson. So these are all creative place colors and I mix them with some Atelier pouring medium and Floetrol. And just because um, this message, show that's fine. There we go. Um, previous live or video, we were talking about silicon. This is the Modatech silicon spray that I use. We're not using it tonight though, but I put it here so I'd remember to show it. And this is the varnish, the satin varnish that I'm using at the moment. And it's from National Art Materials in Australia here. Um, and I love the satin. So 
it looks very natural. All right, back to a little bit of white. I'm trying to drizzle it so it doesn't sink through too much as you do when you drop from heights because the cup is so deep. Let's go now to Right. Just waiting to go to work. Oh wow. Hi mum. Cadmium yellow hue. Just trying to make it sit on the top of that. And then we'll have some emerald green. Try not to squeeze too hard as well because that puts the pressure to make that paint sink into the other colours. Add another bit of white here. Trying to drizzle. <laughs> it's sinking. Right. How are we going? Right. Excellent. Now this is the mixture that I use from this one. Um, let's put it together. Cadmium yellow hue and emerald green create this lime color and it's much more vibrant and bright. I love it. Trying not to squeeze it, pouring it in. Okay. And go back with a little bit more white. So at this point, I would like to use a blue again. So the ultramarine deep. go back to here this is a turquoise that I made up using cobalt blue the emerald green and titanium white I think next to that I'd like to put some yellow again so look at this I love all these places where everybody's from this is great Thanks so much for coming in and watching. I really appreciate it. And now I'm gonna go red. A bit more white. And I think we might stop there. So that's what we'll pour over the bottle bottom. Bottle bottom. Bottle bottom. <laughs> okay. So I will use the leftover of the white to come around these edges. And just Spread it around so that the canvas is wet a little bit. Not worried about that blue section. And I will use paint from the container if I need to fill in any more gaps around it. Excited? Yep, me too. We're ready. Fingers crossed, everybody. Okay, let's go there. Hang on, 
get that bit of debris off. Okay. There. Good. And cheers. So I'm going to do like a spiral at the top here just because I think that may help with some of the colour mixing. And just at the same time watching it as it flows over and making sure that it's flowing over approximately as evenly as possible. Okay, that's looking awesome. Just pull back there. There's a lot of bubbles in there. Let's see. Sorry, I'm using two hands. I can't check if that's actually in focus. All right. So now I will pull out this bit. So it's pretty much grabbing it and lifting it straight up, getting my hand underneath to catch any further drips. Oh, and we're good. And we got a bit wriggly because I've moved it and tilted it, but that's okay. That's okay. Oh. Hi, Jean. Hey, Carol. Um, why don't you use it? I don't want to use silicon in this pour because I like the lines. And if I use silicon, um, it takes away the effect of the lines. If you may have noticed then, while I use the torch to pop bubbles, there are some bubble cell-like effects. Not true cells, but cell-like effects. Um, yeah, other things. Um, I have a, a mixture of whether or not I like to use silicon in certain pores or not. So, um, what are your swirl techniques? Are a no. This is, I should have wet the entire canvas. That's what I'm concluding right now because the paint has just rolled over itself all the way and I've lost half of the bottle bottom effect. So we'll see, we'll spread it around and see what does come up. No worries, Carol. So do you do pouring? Do you like to use silicon yourself to get cells? Sorry, I know you can't see all of it right now. Just getting over this edge, stubbornly. And we'll come back to this edge. Amazing effect, thanks. Yeah, you do. Awesome. Awesome. So just bringing the weight of that paint in a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that's how it looks. It looks like another 
you know, multiple swirls. Oh, but there are some amazing sections in this that I'm quite thrilled with. This is like a dreamy, washed out kind of, mm, pretty. I'll get you down for a closer. So just clearing out some more bubbles. Have a look i'm going to move the camera so i'm going to be as gentle as i can it's pleasing yay you'll stop using silicon so much love the lines it's beautiful carol thank you so much um yeah it's just personal preference on that silicon also with varnishing or resin resining the piece afterwards um, the silicon can cause, you know, extra issues. Thanks, raccoon sister. Okay, all right. Here we go. Just check with some comments. Hi, Sharon. You finally got in. Thank you for coming. Thanks everybody. Let's have some close-ups. Okay, sorry about the glare. Let's try and get rid of it. So this is one of the section with the lines. And these trippy sections that are really kind of soft and blended You love the bubbles. <laughs> Look at that. Those colours. There we go. See, the pores themselves can create cells just by the um, the densities of the paints. There's another one of those sections. Kind of looks dreamy. Yeah, so the densities of, oh yeah, <laughs> Raccoon Sister, that is so cool. It just, you typed that and I said that at the same time. Um, there we go. I like this section here a lot. The pinks and the greens. Coming up to the top right hand side. Lots of the darker there. Let's try and try and work around those lights. More green and pink. Mm. But that's a lot deeper with the red in there as well. But beautiful. Oh, those lights. There we go. So there we have it. Very cool. Got a couple of eyeballs down here. Come to check you out. All right. So another another canvas full of effects. So there we go. All right. I'm just going to pop you up gently as I can. Oh. Pop you back at the back of the table and move this where we go there. That looks good. Quite trippy, yeah. It's like you got these soft, dreamy, smoothie bits and then these trippy lines. Awesome. I'm thrilled. I'm going to move it off to the side now and then we'll have a look and see if there's enough drip off underneath to do a couple of dips. <laughs> right, 
I'll just be a moment. like we've got some paint here some of it looks like it might be a bit muddy but let's just see but <laughs> um, all right so my photo paper's gone missing oh there it is so for dips I just use this is your 4x6 uh, photo paper that you can print on at home. So there's the glossy side and then the cardboard side. So it's just the general photo paper. And I have to assess, I think, try and scrape it up actually. There's a nice red and green section here. I'd like to see if we can get that without getting it too muddy. And if I stop shaking. And that's nice, but I think I like to do dips rather than just lines. And as soon as you touch it, it goes muddy. So let's just, oh, see, look at that instant mine. Okay, scrape that away. Tonight may not be a night. To do dips. So let's see. Yeah. It's not too bad. It's not bright and vibrant, but it's worth drying to see how it looks afterwards. And I'll just give it a torch. <coughs> It's just to clear out the air bubbles. And I think they'll try one here because there's some green and some purple. But otherwise, that'll be it. So... Dun, dun, dun. Ugh, mud. No. Not happening for tonight. Muddy, muddy was a... Don't know. Ready? Twing. Blah. <laughs> Instant mud. All right. So there we go. That's what we've got for tonight. So does anybody have any further questions before we run away? Just finding my chair. Okay. Did I use Floetrol? Yes, Jean. There was a mixture of Atelier pouring medium and Floetrol with my coloured paints and my white house paint, I mix that equal parts with Floetrol only. Excuse me a moment. <coughs> okay. Um, all right, so. Thank you, raccoon sister. Sleep well, sweet dreams. All right, let me just. Okay, so I would use Oh. Um, 
I'm just going to estimate 30 mils of paint. 30 mils of paint into a container. And 30 mils of these two mixed together. That's a really bad description, isn't it? Okay. Um, thanks for stopping in, Braddy Patty. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks, Sonny. Um, okay, so I put Atelier Pouring Medium and equal parts of Floetrol together. And that creates what I call my mix. So then I will use this mix and mix that with the paint at approximately equal parts. So 50-50. If it's too thick and needs water, then I add some. If it's fine, I don't. So that bit's up to you. It depends how you like to use your paints. And some techniques require slightly different consistencies. So, okay. Have I used glue ever? Yes. Yes, I have. Um, let's just see. It's a very boring mess for you to look at there, isn't it? Um, percentage. Thank you, thank you. Ready? Right, Mum. Glue ever? Yes. Um, thanks for coming in, Lisa. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks, Jean. Um, I, I did use PVA glue in the beginning. And I, I, I liked it. I got great results, but I wanted to change to something. The PVA glue that I was using wasn't acid free. Uh, so if I wanted to be able to um, try and avoid the non-yellowing and things like that, I changed to start using Liquitex or the Atelier pouring medium and the Floetrol. But yes, I have used glue. so. All right, fabulous everybody. I apologize that you're still looking at this and I will endeavor to create something that is nicer to look at. But right now, I just had a thought that I could, for those that are still here, <laughs> thank you for staying. Just run over some of these again. You're welcome, Carol. Thank you. Let's run over these. <laughs> Thanks, Jean. So, have a quick look at these and then we'll go. So, I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you so much. Tonight. I can't wait to see how it looks dry and I can stand it up. But, no, Barry, take care. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, Jean. Thanks, Speechless. All right. Be kind, be creative, and be fabulous. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.